Okay, so where we left off, we were generating some random words out of a list. And that seems to be working pretty good. So let's look at the next tool that we decided we are going to write here on team two. Uh, we're going to get a check to see if it's a valid guess. And so I'm going to come in here uh, inside my class, but after that get random word method, I'm going to drop in here the method signature that we agreed upon in our teams uh, to work on. And I've got a valid guess method. Now, every time I do this, it's going to highlight this in red because it says you're saying you're going to return a Boolean, but you're not actually returning anything. And so that's okay. Eventually we're going to return something like just like we did here. Now, uh, I didn't put any comments in the last one, but it'd probably be good to add in here and say, uh, get a random word so the, that we know what we're doing. Now, some people would say this is, um, you know, unnecessary because we're called the method get a random word. And if we do descriptive methods like this, honestly, it's probably unnecessary, but I think anything that just is a little bit confusing, we can see what's happening here. We can see we're declaring a, a word variable. Anything that you just think might be a little bit confusing, I think it's good to throw in a little comment. It just saves time and makes things easier for other programmers as they look at your code, but also for yourself as you come back and work on your code a month later. It helps you to remember what you were doing at that part. All right, so let's let's validate this guess. So. In order, eventually I'm gonna return a result out of this. So I'm gonna say uh, Boolean and just result. And I'm gonna to default to say it's a valid guess unless we find something that makes it invalid. And so that'll be my default. Default to a valid guess. Okay. And then uh, I need some logic in here to look at it. So they're gonna pass me that guess. I'm gonna have it at the time that I run this. And I'm also going to get a list of letters guessed. And so let's just do a few different checks. So I can say if um, the guess uh, what? So the first thing we looked at is we, we were talking about the different things that can be wrong. Is, is, it, a, is it a letter, <laughs> right? So the guess, well, first of all, it could be more than one thing. And maybe that's where we start. What is the length of it? We're only supposed to get one thing which is one letter. And so we say, if the guess, and then we've got some different methods because it's a string that comes along with it, I can say if the length of it is anything uh, other than one, so not equal to one. Okay, not equals, exclamation point, equal sign. If it's anything uh, other than a one, then we are gonna set result equal to false. Now, it did try to default for a second to return because I started to type that accidentally. Return false, but um, it just is, I know people do this, it's, it's just really hard to debug when we have multiple exit points from the method and the return will exit immediately. It just works so much better if you set a variable and then at the end, in my experience, uh, have one common return statement. Now there's always exceptions, but if our default is to instead set this result variable and say result equals um, false, then at the end of all this, after it's all said and done, we can have a statement that says return the result, and but that won't have happened. We won't we won't be returning out of if statements. It just makes it much more difficult to de to debug. All right, so I can even put a little note in here and say, check for uh, only one character, okay? I can have a second if statement here. So F, what's our second thing? If we go look at the, so is it uh, not a, you know, is it a letter? So if the, the guess is a letter, how are we gonna do that? So we've got the guess and as it turns out, if we go search and look, we can use um, a method. So I can just say, well, I guess we ought to take a step back because if we've determined, I'm trying to decide how to do this in the best way. Um, 
we probably want this to be an else if situation is what I'm thinking in my head. Because if we've determined that it's not one letter, then let's just get out of here, right? So we can daisy chain these if statements together by using an if and then an else if. We don't even need to look at the second thing if the first thing is already false. And so if we want to chain these if statements together so that it operates more efficiently, we don't go evaluate three different things, even though we knew on the first one it wasn't valid. And if it makes sense, then we can daisy chain these together. And so I wouldn't just do it um, as a, you know, default practice. But if you look at the situation, I'm saying we don't, we, well, because my thought was, as we go look at these to see if it's a letter, do I need to go look at three characters to see if it's a letter or not? And the answer is no, I don't even want to look at it. And so, but if we just have one character, then this is really easy. Because I can go in and say, if not, um, and then we can use the char method and say is letter. Now, how did I know that? If I didn't know it, I would just would have gone out and looked it up and I would have found it. I can. There's a method there that's going to return a true or a false. And it, it shows me right here as I hover over it. Um, it's going to return. I can't hover. I can't point. Look down a few lines. Returns a true if, if the char is a letter, otherwise false. And so I can pass to it a letter. Well, which it wants one letter. It doesn't want a string. If I try and pass in... Uh, the guess, then it's not going to like that because guess is not a character. But I can go into the guess and go get the character at element zero. So go to guess zero and that will be one character. And so this says go in to the guess string, which is an array behind the scenes, and go to element zero, which is going to be the first character in that guess string. If, if, it, if uh, it's a letter at that spot, then let's just give them a little message here. Um, missing a parenthesis. Let's give them a little message. So console.writeLine and say, sorry, the guess needs to be a letter. And we could do it, I didn't do it up here, but we could do the same thing. We, and then I'm gonna say the same, result equals false result equals false and up here I could have called followed that same pattern so console dot right line and said sorry the guess can only be one letter all right and our third check is to see has it already been guessed so this check to make sure it is a letter and then our third else if statement in this case is going to be um, let's go back to our file uh, hasn't been not been guessed before and so I can do this one easy enough by saying let's go look at the the guess and see is it in the list of letters guessed and so I'll go and check they're gonna hand me the, the list of letters that have been guessed so I can say if letters guessed contains, now again, if I didn't know this, I didn't know it off the top of my head, I have to go look it up. And so you go look it up and I say, does it contain um, the guess? Now the guess at this point should only be one character because we, we figured that out by making this an if else if statement. And then in here, if that guess is inside the letters guess string, then I can say console.writeLine, sorry, you already guessed that letter. Try again. Maybe I won't have to try again because I don't know how that's going to factor out on the, the next side. But anyway, okay, so then, and then I, of course, would set result equal to false. All right, so now that I have those statements, and this is check to see if the letter has already been guessed. Now, between those three statements, I'm validating the data, and in the end, I'm either going to return a true or return a false out of this method. All right, we'll take a look at the third and last method in this class in the next video. Spencer out.